All right, cool. So now that we know what the application process looks like, let's talk about chapter one, tree biology. And this is actually pretty essential knowledge for a good arborist to understand. It allows us to um, make proper decisions on where to place our cuts while trimming a tree um, and know what time of year to even trim a tree. Like in my area, oak wilt is pretty bad. Um, and understanding how that works and when I need to trim an oak tree is essential and uh, or else, you know, just go out and kill a bunch of oak trees. Um, it also, speaking of oak wilt, it also allows us to uh, diagnose problems like that. Um, understand what's going on with the tree and how that disease is uh, affecting it. Um, I don't know if there's a treatment for it. I don't believe there is. Um, but all we can do is catch it and try to protect the other oaks around it. Um, and then that goes into assessing for future, you know, problems, which could be your like intersecting limbs, your downward facing limbs, you know, all, all sorts of stuff. Um, it's all a part of tree biology, you know. So in a nutshell, tree biology is the study of structure and function and how they relate so let's get right into it okay so all living things grow from the division of cells in their bodies and in trees this occurs in two special locations the primary or apical mere stems and the secondary mere stems the primary mere stems are responsible for the elongation and growth of your shoots and roots so they're located at the tip of each twig and the tip of your root system, like uh, your absorbing roots. Um, the secondary mere stems are your cambium, and this is this the this increases the diameter of the tree. Your cambium is uh, it's if you peel back the bark of a tree, it's like a green th thin membrane, um, and that produces xylem, the wood of the tree and phloem. Uh, xylem on the inside and phloem on the outside, just beneath the bark. I've got a twig. All right, so like I said, I've got myself a little twig here. Um, so, let's talk about the structure, I guess, first. A twig is attached to a branch. A branch is atta attached to a lead or stem. You know, so the branch, the stem supports the branch, the branch supports the, tw the twig. And they actually don't, um, it's not like a symbiotic relationship, it's an autonomous relationship. That's why you can see one dead limb in a tree and the rest of the tree is flourishing. Um, yeah, so, all right, let's talk about the twig though. Right here, we have our terminal bud and I believe these two I hope it's focusing you can see right here is the terminal bud this line is um, last year's growth actually well this this year's growth this line to this line is last year's growth um, Cool, yeah, we got another terminal bud right here. It looks like we have a uh, node, which is uh, where, you know, your di a different shoot of the twig goes off. And um, yeah, what causes that growth is right in here, the terminal bud where the apical mere stems are located. Okay, cool, so that's the apical mere stems. Um, t for the cambion, and like I said, apical mere stems, or the primary mere stems, or the terminal buds, are um, responsible for for uh, elongation and growth. And this is where the height of the tree comes. This green stuff right here is your cambium, and this controls the diameter. There's actually two um, secondary mere stems. This is the cambium, the one I'm mainly worried about, and there's also like cork cambium in the bark, which is responsible for bark growth. 
But this stuff produces the vascular system of the tree, the xylem and phloem. Before I move on to the xylem and phloem, um, I just want to give a brief breakdown of the branch collar. Uh, this is the bulge from where the branch meets the stem, and it's just uh, com compacted tissue from growth. It's just important because you want to pl you don't want to cut the branch collar off. You want to place your cut right in front of it. The wood of the tree is the xylem. This um is where you count like your rings. Everybody knows you can count your rings to uh, determine the age of the tree. And your cambium is right here. And your phloem is just on the, right on the outside of that. We're gonna talk about xylem first. This um, has four functions. It's uh, support to, you know, it's used to support the weight of the tree as well as a, uh, it's a storage system as well for carbohydrates to be used different throughout the later and colder months of the year. Um, it's also a defense against disease and decay. Like when you prune a tree, say this was just a prune mark, not a very good cut, but the tree will scab over itself and prevent that decay from traveling further over time. Um, and the last one is the conduction of water and dissolved minerals up the tree through the root system. So water moves up the xylem. Phloem is used, uh, moves carbohydrates down, the sugars made from the leaves uh, through photosynthesis. And it moves down through the tree um, through rays in the xylem to be stored or used or um, sent to where more energy is needed um so yeah okay cool so there's two different types i don't know if they're types but there's two different functions of xylem there's heartwood and sapwood heartwood is the, your structure your support and the sapwood is what is actually moving that water and minerals from the ground okay awesome I'm editing this video right now and we're gonna call it here. I do not want these videos to turn into a death by PowerPoint situation. Um, I'm doing, there's a lot in chapter one, so I'm gonna break it up into two parts. Uh, going off the top of my head, um, part two, we didn't talk about the root system that much. We didn't talk about the leaves and um, we didn't talk about respiration and transpiration. So, I'll do my best to cover that. I'm learning very um, quickly that editing is hard. Creating these videos is hard. So if you are still here watching, I very much appreciate you. And uh, I hope I'm able to at least share some bit of knowledge and broaden your, <laughs> broad, I don't know, broaden your horizon. Um, at least share a bit of knowledge and help you prepare for the arborist test. Uh, if there's any, if you're going through the book as well and want me to touch on something more, that's always an option and I would be happy to. But I have to keep it moving and get through the chapters myself in order to take the test. So until then, I'll uh, see you in part two.